In this uh, video, we're going to look at the Dixon Q test, and what we're going to do is use the Dixon Q test to determine whether or not there is an outlier present in this data set here. Just as a remark, we are going to use a 5% level of significance. So, there's a couple of steps to this. The first thing we will do is we will arrange the data set into ascending order first off. Okay, so, um, there we are, 19. 25 and so on all the way up to the 37. Now what we're particularly interested in is seeing if this value here 19 is an outlier with regards to the rest of the data set. Okay. So our potential outlier is 19. Okay. So what we're going to do here is first off formally state the null and alternative hypothesis for the Dixon null uh, Dixon Q test. So the null is always something like this for outlier tests. There are no outliers present in the data. It's, that's the usual way you would sort of state the test. The uh, alternative hypothesis is that there is one outlier present in the data, uh, for example, or which is to say the uh, lowest value, 19. Now, just let's be very specific about this. There's a couple of variations of uh, outlier tests. This one is very simple, the Dixon test. There is one outlier present. You sort of identify it. There are a couple of variations of it, but this is uh, the one we're going to sort of. Uh, um, uh, the, the, there's more complicated versions of outlier tests, but just for this particular test, just one outlier present. So anyway, what we're going to do first off is uh, get into the math, the mathematics of it. So the test statistic is as follows. So it's Q test statistic TS subscript for test statistic is the gap divided by the range. Okay. So the gap is the difference from of the outlier from the next value. So if we recall on our number line up here, let's just go back. The lowest value or the outlier here, the potential outlier here was 19. The next lowest value here is 25 and the gap there is 6. Okay, so there's a difference there of 6. Now the range is the other value here. It's the difference between the lowest value and the highest value and that here is 37 minus 19 that is 18 okay so the gap there is 6 okay the lowest value are the outlier and the absolute value to the uh, of the distance to the next uh, point and the range is simply the range okay so it's 37 minus 19 over 18 so it's a straightforward enough calculation the test statistic is the gap divided by the range. Here it's a nice, more sort of nice round numbers. 6 divided by 18, not point, uh, that's not right, not point three three three. Sorry, that's uh, an example from a uh, different, uh, so it's not point three three three, one third essentially. Okay, so, uh, okay, before we look at the at the critical values, we confirm that the, the the size of the data set is n equals ten. So there's ten values there. You can just check that very quickly. You're not you might not be told it, but you know you can just check there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you just count them off like that. Okay, so there's ten values there. N equals ten. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to scroll down it. So you're going to tables like this. This is the Dixon Q tables. So what we're going to do here is we're using alpha equals 0.05, okay, and we're the sample size here or the size of the data set is 10. So the test statistic that we were interested in is this one here. I'm just going to write it in again. 0.466, okay. So 0.466. Is our critical is our uh, critical value? Okay, so we nearly have everything ready now. So the rule of thumb: if this is the test statistic, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so in our case, our test statistic was 0 0.33. Is that greater than 0 0.466 or 0 0.466 uh, three decimal places? And the answer here is no. So what we're going to do is we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, there's not enough evidence to say that there's an outlier present in that data set. Uh, that's it. Uh, let's just run through the steps again. So the first, the main part is oh well, obviously the first part is 
uh, putting it in ascending order and just sort of picking out the gap and the range and also just uh, checking how many values are there in the data set. Uh, just a formal statement of the null and alternative hypotheses, just something along those lines there. Uh, the test statistic there, test statistic, QTDS equals gap divided by range, so just know how to calculate that. And then the matter of looking up the, the uh, tables. So again, the row is the, the number of items and the column is the significance level. It's usually going to be 5%. Sometimes you might be told um, something else, like alpha equals 10% or 1% or whatever. All right, that's it.